Hey guys, welcome to The Dating Game with Troy Francis, your host, myself, Troy Francis, dating coach for over a decade. I've helped countless guys all over the planet improve their results in dating and with women and in the sexual marketplace. So I know everything there is to know about this shit. So really, this is the only channel you need to subscribe to. So please do that now. Anyway, what we're going to talk about now is uh, a problem that comes up a lot for, for dudes, particularly guys who work in sort of quite analytical type jobs or quite sort of uh, maybe the corporate world or they work in like something quite like coding or data or tech or something like this. And it is simply how do I move from work mode into being in state? Okay, now in the uh, in the the dating advice world, there was this concept that would get talked about a lot called being in state, okay? It's also referred to sometimes as momentum, all right? And what it really means is, you know how sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll go out, maybe it's a night out, you go to the bar, you go to the club, or you're just walking around the city in the afternoon. And, and you know how sometimes you're in like a super, super social mood, and it just feels like you could talk to anybody, and anything you say is going gonna, is gonna to play well, and you can almost do no wrong. You know, you could talk to anybody, they're going to receive it well, it's going to go brilliantly. You just, you've just got that vibe about you. You've got that super social kind of energy. People are buying into it. Sometimes people are like, they're smiling at you. You're feeling it from, you know, you're, you're, you're at one with yourself and the people around you. Obviously, when we're talking about the dating scene and we're talking about, okay, so how do I go and meet girls, that's the optimal state to be in, right? That's the perfect way to be because w what that means is you're in a condition whereby if you start a conversation with somebody you find attractive, it's most likely to go well. The difficulty is if you've just spent 12 hours in a darkened room like this and you've been working on spreadsheets and you've been doing some you know ca complicated calculations or you've been doing some sort of coding or some sort of you know technical type work or, or or even creative work but creative work that's taken you into very much into your head how do you then s separate from that and get into the state where you are super super social okay and i get a lot of guys asking me this because a lot of the guys that i work with as clients tend to be people who are professionals or they're business people or they they work in tech or development or stuff like that okay and by the way if you do want to work with me just drop me an email troy at realtroyfrancis.com and we can have a conversation about you know where you're at and what I, I can help you with, basically. But fundamentally, this is another one of these things where there isn't really an easy answer because that you're, what you're, what's happening is you're using two very different sides of the brain, okay? So you've got the side of the brain which is very logical and which is very analytical and which is very work-focused, and that's the bit where you've been for the past, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever. And then you've got the bit that's more fun, that's more playful, that's more silly, that's more jokey. And that's the part that you have been neglecting for the last eight or, or 10 hours, okay? And the job is to move from one side to the other. But it's not an easy thing. It's not something you can just do overnight. Now, what are the solutions then? Well, one solution is that you don't try to do something that's very, very difficult. So it might be, you know, you finish a, a very long shift at work. You, you've had a lot of very intense work to do. You're tired. You know, your your head's still full of the, the the work, and you just think, look, I'm just, I'm just not feeling this. You know, I'm just. If I go and have a conversation with a girl now, I just know that the way it's going to come out, it's not going to really fly. I don't feel like going to the bar. I just want to go home and chill, and that's okay. All right, look, I mean, none of us are miracle workers here. We can't just make ourselves suddenly become this incredibly sort of empathic kind of performative social god just by clicking our fingers. I mean, it would be amazing if we could, but the reality is it's very hard to do that. It's almost impossible to do that, okay? So the first thing is you might want to compartmentalize and just say, okay, look, Monday to Friday, it's work time. I get on with that. And then at the weekends, I do more of my socializing. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. However, if you don't want to do that, or if you want to, you know, uh, uh, 
a, a bit of a more robust tip about how to handle this. And this is something, by the way, that I used to experience because I was working in a corporate job and I used to then in the evenings, I would go out and I would go and meet girls and date and stuff like that. And so I had exactly this experience where sometimes it would be very intense at work and then I would have to switch into social mode, okay? Um, the best way that I've found to get around this is fundamentally by doing exercises, okay? Like basically doing easy, low-level social exercises in order to snap yourself out of that logical linear mode into the more playful social mode, okay? And the easiest ones that you can do are really just either going up and paying compliments to people, or if you don't even want to do that, you can just go up and ask for directions, okay? I mean, I've in the past, I've gone up to literally like 10 people and asked them for directions, okay? Like, where's the Apple store? 10 times, 10 different people. It doesn't really matter who it is. It could be a guy, it could be a woman, young, old, whatever, right? And the reason you're doing it is simply to get your mouth working and to get out of your head and to start conversing with people, okay? And what you will often find is that after the first few times, like the first one, you might feel a bit like, oh, I'm a fish out of water here. And it's like, oh, where's the Apple store? And it feels a bit awkward. After you've done it a few times, you generally start to relax into it, okay? You start to relax into it a bit. It starts to become more just natural. Oh, there'll be a variety of, it, of uh, reactions to something like this. You know, some people will say, oh, I, I don't know. Some people will say, oh, it's over there, down there. Other people will get their phone out and start giving you all the details and stuff. Other people will say, well, haven't you got, haven't you got a phone? What are you asking me for? Which is <laughs> quite funny and quite true. Um, so you're going to get a variety of responses. But the point is, and sometimes, and sometimes, and this is the other thing, what might happen is you stop, you know, quite a, an attractive girl and you say, where's the Apple store? And she actually wants to carry on the conversation with you. You know, maybe she's not from from your town, and she's like, "Oh, I, well, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm a tourist here." And oh, you're not from here. And then she actually, you know, and then suddenly, unintentionally, you find yourself in a situation where maybe you could meet somebody. Okay, I'm not. That's not the purpose of the exercise, but I'm just saying that sometimes that that does happen. So, doing things like that can really help because you 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 just need to you 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 just need to start using the other side of your brain. Okay, you need to get out of the logical, you need to get out of the linear, and you need to get into the social. Okay, so that's the first thing. So you could do that, you know, five, 10 times or whatever. You can then, and this is an exercise that we will often get clients to do anyway, to get more used to just talking to people in public. You might then decide, okay, I'm going to go and pay some compliments. So you could go up to five or 10 people. And, and again, I mean, you know, it, 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 could, it could be dudes if you want. I mean, ideally, it's going to be women, but it's up to you because the main thing is about just getting your mouth open and talking. Go up to somebody and say, hey, listen, I, I just had to say, your style is awesome. You look great. I just wanted to say, anyway, have a nice day, okay? Um, again, if you do that five times, six times, seven, 10 times, what are you going to find out? Well, firstly, you're going to see that the sky is not going to fall in. Most of the time, if you compliment somebody, they tend to, you know, take it well. They tend to like it. I mean, I, I, somebody complimented me the other day, amazingly. I can't, what was it about? I can't remember, but somebody actually came up to me the other day and they said, oh, I really like something you're wearing. And I was like, oh, no, cool, man. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. That's very nice of you. You know, like it, it makes you feel good, right? Um, so do that. And that, again, is going to help you shift into the part of your brain that is where you need to be, which is this more social aspect, all right? Um, and, and you start to shake off because the, the, the very worst thing, and, and one of the big problems we find when we are training guys, and, and, and listen, I mean, if you work in tech or you work in, um, you know, you're big in crypto or you work in finance or you are, you're one of these people who you're very analytical, but you find the social side of things difficult, then by all means get in touch because that's kind of the main people I work with, to, to be honest, right? Uh, you can email me, Troy, at realtroyfrancis.com. But, you know, a lot of these guys, they, on one level, they've got everything, a lot of things figured out. But on another level, they find it very hard. They find it very hard 
to, 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 to go into the social. And I think some of these guys, they're attracted to my content because they feel like my content has this more sort of like uh, cerebral element to it, okay, which they appreciate. You know, I've had people with PhDs and stuff like that and doctors and things like that who they appreciate my content because they think it has this sort of intelligent side, which is very nice of them. Um, but, the, but their problem is that while they're very intelligent and they may also be very successful in many ways, what they're kind of not able to do is to slip into the other side because unfortunately what you need it's like socializing really and 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 dating girls certainly in the early parts it's quite shallow in a way and i'm not saying that as in any i'm not throwing shade at women or anything like that but the old adage girls just want to have fun it's very true right they want to have fun for the most part fun positive experiences certainly at the beginning with the guys that they meet they don't want to meet somebody who's super boring super nerdy super in his head um and the other thing with with those guys is often they can come across as being a bit nervous as well and that's you know absolutely a deal killer so you have to kill that side of of yourself at least for a period of time all right and it is doable it is doable and i'm a testament to that because I, I was never really like a techie sort of person. I was never like a like a, a figures, like analytical type person, but I was certainly a very cerebral person. I was certainly a person who was very much in my own head. And through a process of debauchery over many years, I managed to sort of break out of that and um, become actually quite different as a person. So now I think I'm very, very different now to how I was when I was, say, 18, 19, 20. I mean, I, I, I guess most people are right. But I think that if you, if you met me then, you would think, you would be surprised, I think, to see how I am now. I think I changed a lot. Uh, how did I do that? Well, to be honest, a lot of it was just throwing myself into situations that were awkward, throwing myself into social situations that were challenging, okay? Going up and talking to groups of people, going up and talking to, you know, there's a couple of girls and then there's three guys going into that interaction and having a conversation sometimes getting blown out you know like like enduring whatever came with that you know and the more of that more difficult stuff you do then the easier that it gets to be social but i don't want to you know scare anybody that's that's not what we're saying here that to start this in a very easy way as i say the exercises i've outlined will help you to move from the uh you know, the, the in your head bit to the social bit. And then when you've done that for a while, you know, maybe you've paid some compliments and things like that. The likelihood is you're going to feel more comfortable. You're going to feel a bit more like, oh, okay, right. You know, the sky hasn't fallen in. I can talk to people. This is pretty cool. And then you might then want to extend the conversations a little bit, a bit, a bit more like, oh, you know, you, you seem cool. Maybe we can go grab drinks or, you know, why don't we exchange numbers or, or, or whatever, okay? So um, I would say it's a process of easing into it okay another way of looking at this though and this is my i suppose final point on this is you don't actually have to be in state in order to go and talk to a girl okay so when the notion of of state or momentum was first like talked about online uh as being an important thing and it it is an important thing because look i mean as an example, you know, I've had nights out, okay, where at the beginning of the night, you're very rusty, you feel a bit shy, you feel a bit like in your head, and you just go and talk to a load of people. And then by the end of the night, you're just like, what, you know, whatever, you know, you're the, the life and soul of the party, and you feel like nothing can touch you, you know, you're, you, you have this almost social force field around you, okay? And that's about momentum, you've built up that momentum during the night. So it does help, and it is important. However, if you walk out of the house, and you're feeling preoccupied and you're kind of in your head and you've got stuff going on, but you see a girl and she kind of, you know, she looks at you or she doesn't, whatever. You see this attractive woman and you think, oh my God, she's amazing. She could be my future wife. I, I, I just wish I could, I'd love to get to know her. Then regardless of state, regardless of how you feel, what you should do and what you owe to yourself is to go and take the action and just go and talk to her anyway. You know, just go up and say, hey, listen, you know, I, like I don't normally do this, but I, I, I've got to say I just saw you. I think you look very nice. I wanted to come and say hello. And just do the action anyway. Because you don't know before you've done it how it's going to go. I mean, it might be that 
she just really likes you. Okay? And then the whole issue of was I in state? Was was my momentum right? Was my vibe right? And everything. It kind of goes out the window because remember, a lot of this stuff is intangible and it's somewhat unpredictable. Okay? Like sometimes you could do everything right and your energy can be great and you can meet somebody and they, they're still just not into you. You know, like there's anybody who claims that there's some kind of formula and you can just meet anybody and make them fall in love with you. I mean, it's obviously nonsense. It's just not true. Okay. But equally on the other side of it, there are people who you, you're going to meet, there are women you're going to meet and they just like you for whatever reason. They like the way you look. They like the way you dress. They like your sort of demeanor. They like your confidence, et cetera, et cetera. So ideally, yes. You want to be in that great state where you can just walk out of the house and you're like, right, bang, I'm on. I'm socially confident. I'm rocking. You know, I'm, ro I'm rocking and rolling. But if you're not, but you see somebody you like, then as I say, really, you owe it to yourself just to go and do the action anyway. And this kind of feeds into the masculinity trope that we see talked about a lot online, which is that as a guy, it is your job to do the action regardless of how you feel, okay? So you might not particularly feel like getting up and going to work. You might not particularly feel like going to the gym. You might not particularly feel like exercising or sitting down and doing X, Y, Z, task, whatever it might be. You have to just go and do it anyway, okay? And we have to take emotions out of the equation. And um, the same thing really persists with, uh, or, or, or rather the same thing really applies with the dating stuff, okay? You might not feel like it. You know, you might not feel in the best possible mood. But you've got to think, play the tape forward. If you don't do it, are you going to regret it? And the chances are you probably will. Because if, Again, this is a hypothetical, but assuming, you know, she's 100% your type, she's amazing, you think, oh my God, you know, I'd just love to get to know her. And you don't do anything because you're feeling in a slightly, you know, in your head kind of mood, you're probably going to regret that. Okay? Now, it could be that you go up and you say hello and it's a bit awkward and she says, I've got a boyfriend and that's it. Okay, fine. Well, not a problem. Okay? but at least you gave it a go, okay? But equally, as I said, because these things are somewhat intangible, because chemistry is not an exact science, it's not something you can really predict before you interact with the person, you don't know that. You don't know before you go and interact with her how it's going to be. So I would encourage you, firstly, those are the exercises you want to do, basically going out, making a bunch of compliments, um, or sorry, asking for directions is the easiest thing to do then making a bunch of compliments, and then sort of building it up from there. Or, if you do see somebody you really like, just thinking, sod it, I'm just going to take the action anyway. And there's a really interesting thing, if you read Atomic Habits by James Clear, where he talks about, obviously, building new habits, part of this is when you take a step back, it's about thinking, okay, it's not so much the habit, it's like, what sort of person do I want to be? Well, I want to be the kind of person who, when I see an opportunity, I go for it, okay? I want to be the sort of person who I don't just rely on things to fall into my lap, I go out into my life and I make them happen, okay? Well, all right, I want to be that sort of person, so taking a step back, what would that person do? Well, they would take action in a situation like the one I described, even if they weren't feeling particularly on fault. Okay, so something to think about there. There's a few different options. Either, you know, you separate your work days out and, you know, you, you have social days on, on, on different days of the week, or you combine it and you, you use those exercises to warm up, or and you can combine the two things. You think, well, sometimes sod being, sod being in state, like just fuck my feelings. I'm going to do the thing that I know that I should do anyway. And this applies in different areas of life as well. You know, you don't feel like going to the gym. Well, okay, fuck your feelings. Go anyway, all right? You're probably going to feel better afterwards. Very important. As as always with this stuff, you know, there's a there's 
the, 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 the sort of the, the, the bait luring you in is the dating stuff, but there's an important life lesson here as well that I think we all need to uh, take on board. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please do like this video. Really, really helps push us up the algorithm. Hit notifications too, so that you know when we've got new stuff coming out. We've got loads and loads of stuff coming out this month. It's gonna be great. Loads of really actionable videos. And in the comments below, let me know what you think about this topic. And also, let me know about other stuff you'd like to see me cover and we can, we can get into it, okay? Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.